So in this little video, we're going to take a look at how we can model to kids how to multiply fractions. And the key here is that we're going to be multiplying based on the area model. So before we start talking about fractions, let's just set the stage for looking at multiplication. Okay, so how do we do multiplication? Well, you'll recall that to find the area of a rectangle, area is equal to the length times the width of that rectangle. So if we have a rectangle that is, has a length of 4 and a width of 5, we know that the area would be equal to 20 because 4 times 5 is 20. Why does that work out? Well, if we think about this on a grid system, that would be 4 rows, 5 columns, and that gives us 20 of these little individual spaces inside here. So we can see on a piece of graph paper how we can model 4 times 5 being equal to 20. So we're going to use that area model here to work with multiplying fractions. The thing we need to keep in mind about fractions is some of the vocab. So we have with the fraction the numerator and the denominator. Okay? So the word numerator actually comes from the word enumerate, which means to count. And denominator comes from the word denomination, which means the size. Think about the denomination of coins, it's the size of that value. So when we're talking about a fraction, we're really talking about a size of a group of objects and how many you're counting out of that group. An easy way to think about this is when we think about two-thirds, you're saying two out of the three. So we have a size of a group that's three and we're only counting two of those for whatever it is that we happen to be counting. So what does that look like in terms of modeling? Well, let's say we wanted to model the fraction two-thirds. That means that I have a denominator of 3, which is a size of 3. Now, I'm counting 2 out of those 3. So how will I show that I'm counting those 2? I will flip them over and I will make them yellow. So here's the important part for us. The size is the group, that's how many chips I have, and the count is the number of yellow chips. Okay? It is that because I've defined it that way. If you wanted to reverse the colors or use you know, a different manipulative that had two different colors on it, you could do that. You would have to just set that up for students and define that. So I've got a size of three chips and two of those I'm counting. This represents the fraction two-thirds because I'm counting two out of my three chips. If I want to multiply that times one-half, I need to be able to model the fraction one-half. One half tells me that I have two chips, that's the size of my group, and I'm counting one of those. Now I have my two fractions shown. And you'll notice that as I organize this, I organize this to set up the length and the width for my rectangle. Okay? Before we do that multiplication, we're going to jump back and work through what the process will actually look like. So. The first thing is to look at my denominators. I had a size of 3 and a size of 2 for my length and my width. That's going to give me, when I multiply, my product will have a size of 6. So the first thing we do when we multiply fractions is we multiply those denominators. That way we know what the two original sizes were and we know what the size of our product is going to be. So 2 times 3 gives us 6. But this wasn't really 3. This was meant to represent 2 thirds. So this is where I'm going to change to 2 thirds now. And this wasn't really 2. This was to represent 1 half, which meant 1 out of those two chips. So now I've reset my sides to incorporate my count or my numerators or the rest of my fraction. And now I just need to do the area model for the yellows. So I'm going to pull these away just for a second and I'll put them back. We can see that when we have a 2 by 1, that's going to create that rectangle in here. So as we push everything back, we're going to see that 2 thirds times 1 half is equal to 2 out of my group of six. 
the size is 6, the count is 2, so that's going to be equal to 2 over 6. Now you might be saying to yourself, well, 2, 6 can be reduced. How can I show reduction with this same process? Well, if you haven't watched Finding Factor Pairs, you might want to take a minute to watch that video. It's about seven minutes. And what it does is it talks about that area model. So what we're saying is if we can reduce that, then 2 and 6 should have a factor in common. Or I should be able to rearrange this rectangle that's my product, I should be able to rearrange these so they have all the same pieces in all the rows or all the columns. I'm going to stick with my rows. And if I slide these two pieces up, now what you'll see is I have a 2 by 6 or 2 by 3 rectangle and I have all the same pieces in each of the rows. So now I can simplify this simply by going down to one row. Now I have a size of 3 and a count of 1 which shows us why 2 6 is equal to 1 third. And what we've really done there, since we've organized it this way, is said this has a width of 2, and I'm going to take this and divide it by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1, 6 divided by 2 gives us 3. And so that's how we can show 2 thirds times 1 half is equal to ultimately 1 third. Let's take a look at a second example. In this one, we want to multiply 3 fourths times 2 thirds. So we're going to model our first fraction's denominator as our width. This would give us a width of 4. And our second fraction had a denominator of 2, or I'm, excuse me, a denominator of 3. And we're going to model our length with 3. So we can see now we're creating a length and a width of 4 times 3. As we do that multiplication, remember the denominator means the size of the groups. So when we're thinking about the size of the group for our first fraction, it was a size of 4. The second fraction had a size of 3. And so when we're multiplying, our product is going to have a size of 12. Because the rectangle that represents the length of 4 and the width of 3 has 12 in it. Okay. So now we've done the multiplication of our denominators, we need to incorporate our numerators. So 3 fourths meant we had a size of 4, and we were counting 3 of those. 2 thirds meant we had a size of 3, and we were counting 2 of those. So now we've changed from just dealing with integers to actually representing the whole fraction. The last thing to do is multiply the numerators, which are highlighted in yellow here, and create our array for the yellow portions. That would give us 6. So if we look at our, our product here, we see a count of 6 out of a size of 12. So we know when we multiply 3 fourths times 2 thirds, that's going to give us 6 times 12 or 6 twelfths, not 6 times 12. So when we're looking at that answer of 6 twelfths, you're probably saying, well, I can reduce that. How could I reduce that? Well, remember with our rectangle, we can find factor pairs simply by making a rectangle. We need the same stuff in every row or in every column. I'm going to keep them the same in the rows. So if I can rearrange these to create a new rectangle, in this case, I've created a rectangle that has a width of 2 and a length of 6. Now, I can divide this by 2. And what we see is now we have a group of 3 count out of a size of 6. So 6 divided by 12 must be the same as a count of 3 out of a group of 6. Essentially what we've done is we've divided the numerator by 2 and the denominator by 2. Now 3, 6 still isn't reduced so I could continue that process and I could create another rectangle where I have the same thing in every row and then I can simplify it and you'll notice here we're dividing this into three groups really and only looking at one. So if we divided these by 3 we see that we have a count of 1 out of a group of 2. And that's one way to show the multiplication of 3 divided by 4 times 2 divided by 3, or 3 fourths times 2 thirds is ultimately 1 half.